So look at the company they keep, look at their circle of friends, you know, that says a lot about that person, you know, so being sincere about yourself, being, being real about yourself, that is Peace, peace, family, what's happening, what's happening, Ross, I see you, queen, I see you, tapped in, for sure, the first one in the building, what's happening, we got a good one, you see the title, you see the title. Yep, we got our brother back, Khaled Muhammad. Uh, he's debating. Appreciate it, Sharonda. Appreciate it. Uh, he's debating a rabbi and a, a, and a, a supposed so-called Jew professor. And what they will be uh, debating, yes, this is a debate. What they will be debating is the mythos or the mythology or the belief system of quote unquote God's chosen people. And once again, take note on how you conduct yourself. Take note on, you know, uh how he doesn't fall for certain things, how his debaters, his uh competition, how they try to set the context early, how they try to slip in the context and just just notice, you know, uh the tactics. Just notice the tactics. Once again, this is the debate series, debate league, uh, debate series, whatever you want to call it. And this is to showcase how to communicate even with people who disagree with you wholeheartedly. As long as you know what you stand on, as long as you know your information, stand on it. Don't trip out. But I've seen this debate a couple times. And personally, it's... It, it, it's it's a classic for sure. I, I, I'll give it that. It's a classic for sure. Uh, let me make sure everything is running right. Give me two seconds, family. Let me see how we looking out there. Oh, yeah, we looking all right. We ain't looking bad at all. Let me see. There we go. There we go. Let me make sure I get this all together. Okay. These are the gentlemen. You can see these gentlemen. Uh, let me try to. There we go. We have a, a supposed Jew, a rabbi, and Kali Muhammad come to debate God's chosen people. Once again, God's chosen people. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Now, a good book. I, I done showcased this book. I done showed this book a couple times. I can't actually show it right now, but there's a book by Arthur Abernathy. Uh, Abernethy. It's called The Jew, a Negro. Once again, it's called The Jew, a Negro. Also, you can get uh, Dr. Ben uh, Joe Cannon. Joe Cannon, he has a book called We the Black Jews. That's also a great book. Uh, and the reason I'm bringing these books up is because some of the history, some of the uh, debating points that this video will contain. They'll be touching on the history of the Jew, uh, the origin of the Jew, things of that nature. So those are two book references that, that I would definitely refer to the family. Once again, that's Arthur T uh, Abernathy, the Jew, a Negro, and Dr. Ben Yocannon, we the black Jew. But for now, let's get the music going, get us in the energy. You know, I give the family about 10 minutes to get in here. Make sure to share this out, family. Let the family know we out, uh, we up, up live. Let's play today's session. So here we are. Shout out to KRS One, still dropping gems, still teaching, still show, showcasing hip hop. Absolutely. I knew I was missing something. Yeah, let's keep it going in here. This is what I'm saying. 
get this album started. Hit that beat. Let's go, family. Don't you fall for it. Don't you fall for it. Keep your head up. Never let up. Never let them get you fed up. You just step up. Get your cup up. Get your cash up. Get your check up. The whole system's a set up. It's time we did it. Get up. We've been about this revolution from the time we met up. Take it back. I got my fist up. Not from X and 88. But revolution only. With That's the right. Don't fall for it. You're the great. We know about propaganda. We know about whitewash. We know the education system. We know, don't fall for the bullshit. Melanated man and woman. Great, great divine beings, man. The original, the mother and the father of this shit. Yeah, I gotta light my herbals. Excuse me, excuse me. Pay attention, pay attention, family. As long as I'm dancing, acting or rapping. As long as I'm dancing, acting or rapping, walking around like I don't know what's happening. You like me, you like me, you like me, you like me. If I'm talking about drinking and nothing about thinking, as long as I'm high and I never ask why, you like me, you like me, you like me, you like me. Yeah. But the 
second I start with the state of the economy. Black leadership, black cards, and black sovereignty. That's when you can't seem to follow me. Confusion, you feel like you're losing. I'm no longer amusing. The song's about choosing, choosing while you're cruising. Either black entertainment or a black revolution. People love to see a young black man rap until he wakes up and realizes he's caught in the So as long as I'm dancing, acting or rapping, walking around like I don't know what's happening. You like me, you like me, you like me, you like me. Hey, hey. If I'm talking about drinking and nothing about thinking, as long as I'm high and I never ask why, you like me, you like me, you like me. Oh, oh. But the minute I get in it about the way these rappers spit it, the minute I start spitting that truth, it comes a critic. I freestyle off the top like removing your Yankee fitted. But they not really checking for skills, they want the Jimmy. Many of the challenges we face, we can solve them. But there's no trust, no unity, and that's the problem. Black people fighting amongst themselves, that's the problem. White people fighting amongst themselves, that's the problem. U.S. foreign policy is simply just bomb them. Rebels against their own government, the U.S. Arms them. Then when things get out of hand, yeah, they try to calm them. More money, more diplomacy, just charm them. If that doesn't work, then they move to Osama. Turn them into a terrorist so they can disarm them. Through the corporate media, we don't stand a chance, but too many people want us to just stand and dance. So as long as I'm dancing, acting or rapping, walking around like I don't know what's happening, you like me, you like me, you like me. Uh, Talking about drinking and not about thinking as long as I'm high and I never ask why. You like me, you like me, you like me. Shout out to X, I see you X, salute, salute. You like me, you like me, you like me. You like me, you like me, you like me. Enough said, we're giving the family enough time. For those who showed up, shout out to the scientists. Always shout out to the scientists. And we got a great one. This is a classic. This is definitely a classic within the uh, the realm of debate, within the realm of information, within the realm of, uh, quote unquote, the black conscious community, quote unquote. I really don't use that term, but some of you might, you know, uh, word associate a little differently. So, you know, this is definitely a classic in every aspect of presenting information, presenting how to present information. And we already know about Khaled Muhammad, you know. Uh, if you don't, go back to my playlist called Master Teachers and get familiar with him. Today, he's debating. This is just what it is, y'all. He's debating a so-called, so-called, hear me out, so-called Jew and a rabbi. And he, well, they're debating, uh, they're debating him, really. But they put it in a, in a, in a, in a, pre a platform to where it seems like everybody's debating everybody. When really it's this, this so-called Jew, this, this so-called Jew, and this rabbi are debating the 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 belief of the chosen people. Yeah, they'll be here, Sharon. Absolutely. King King, salute God. Coach Dude, salute God. Shout out to the scientists indeed. Well, uh, you know, I'm just giving the family a background on what's about to take place. Cause this is one of those. We know how Khalid Muhammad come. He do not come half ass. He don't sugarcoat. It ain't about to be a friendly. Let's be all kumbaya. He don't he don't get down like that. And so when it comes to this topic, once again, like I said, they will be speaking on the Jew. That is the black man and woman. Color codes used loosely. The black man and woman is the Jew. The here we go again with the Jew. To be vague, the Jew. Right? Uh, earlier, I gave references on books, which are probably on my Discord. All you got to go and do is go to my library section of my Discord and download these books uh, for free. Everything's for free. But uh, So when you hear them speak on the Jew, which they will touch on, they're, they're going to touch on a lot more than just the Jew. But, you know, uh, Arthur Abernathy, he, 
he, he published a book called The Jew, A Negro. Get that book. It's only like $8. Uh, also, Dr. Ben. Yeah, Dr. Ben Joe Cannon. We went over him, the master teacher. Definitely a uh, master class teacher. He wrote a book and uh, published a book called We the Black Jew. Go get that book. I believe I have that on my Discord for free as well. These are two books where you can reference some of the background history, origins, and etymology of the quote-unquote Jew uh, and the Jew quote-unquote Jew history. So without me talking too too much, you know, I don't really like to talk too much when it comes to these presentations. You might hear me cut in every once in a while, but really, I just want the, uh, the teachers to teach. Chrissy420, I see you, Queen. Salute to the scientists. Shout out to the scientists. We're a different breed, and I, I, I definitely appreciate it. With that being said, family, <clears throat> family, let's press play. Let's get straight into it. If you can, when you're in the chat and you hear the video, just let me know if it sounds good, if y'all can. I would highly appreciate it. With that being said, let's go. Thing. If you do start a commotion and if you do get pretty loud, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Thank you. Um, to my left, to your right, is uh, Rabbi Ghosting. He's a rabbi at Hillel. He's a director of Hillel right across the street. He's also an instructor at Los Angeles Valley College. <laughs> also, we have Professor Zeb Garber. He's the... Uh, Jewish study chairman at Los Angeles Valley College, and he's also a Jewish study teacher. And this also gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Rasha Deem. He's a West Coast Regional Minister for the Honor Elijah Muhammad of the National Islam. He's also Associate Professor of Pan-African Studies at Cal State Los Angeles. He has traveled extensively throughout Europe and Africa. Two times lecturing at South Africa, special guest for two years of the Uganda President Idi Amin. He has traveled two times to Israel, four times to Egypt, and three times to Mecca. Would you please join me in introducing Dr. Rakhine. Um, Rabbi Ghostin, start first. <laughs> Good morning. I'm concerned about all of you who have to stand in the back. Would it be any easier to, I don't know, maybe to sit up front or something? Um, okay. Um, I am uh, genuinely pleased to be here today. Um, I came in response to an invitation to participate in a uh, commemoration of Martin Luther King's birthday. Um, this day has become an ever increasingly uh, important day to all Americans who are concerned with, with the principles of justice and democracy and, and, and fairness to all people who live in America. Martin Luther King was one of the great Americans whose birthday deserves national attention. It deserves to be regarded as a, a national holiday. And I'm one of those who would certainly promote its establishment as an official legal holiday. I think that recalling the message of his life and the, and the burden of his death calls all of us to work ever harder for, for increased appreciation of one another, for the gifts we have, and for the opportunity to make this country what it is meant to be, a country of freedom and justice for all. Um, we were asked today to talk about who and what is the chosen people. Um, that's a, um, a theological category. Um, it's a um, uh, the chosen people doctrine is a is an article in in the belief system of the of the Jewish people. Uh, it's a doctrine of belief which is important uh, important for Jews to understand and I think it's important for non-Jews to understand as well. 
Let me be very, very clear at the outset. When Jews assert that they are a chosen people, as indeed we do, that is never ever meant in any sense that we feel ourselves superior to anybody. There is no sense in the Jewish people's chosen chosenness doctrine any sense whatsoever that anybody else is inferior for us what it means to be a, a chosen people has always meant a sense of mission a sense of responsibility um, let me share with you just before i go any further some of the words that you can find in in the jewish prayer book um, I, I think that, it, 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 I mean, the, the, the whole direction of, of Jewish self-understanding has always meant that Jews, as a chosen people, must work to eliminate oppression in the world, must work to raise the standards of justice, must work to express compassion for all underprivileged, for all, uh, all people who are in need of help to be part of the, the priestly people, the Jewish people, means a Jew must be philanthropic, must be compassionate. Yoke of Torah, as we say. Um, this is the way one of the morning services that, Jew, that Jews have in the prayer book begins. <coughs> of course, a lot of our prayers use Hebrew, but uh, let me share it with you in, in English. Um, the service begins like this. And now, O Israel, what is it that the Lord your God demands of you? To revere the Lord our God, to walk always in his ways, to love and serve him with heart and soul. And now, therefore, if you will truly keep my covenant... You shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy people. Her expanding notion of what it would mean to be a Jew. I think there are ups and downs in it. For instance, it's pretty clear that although my people, 3,000 years ago, 3,200 years ago, were slaves in Egypt, I and mean, it's awfully clear to me that the Jews who four generations after Abraham who left the promised land and went to Egypt in a time of famine became imprisoned and became slaves uh, and uh, I, I have to, to tell that story because it's very important in Jewish self-consciousness that our people really formed into a people during that time of, of slavery uh, for, for several hundred years we lived in Egypt and were slaves um, building, building the monuments of Egyptian society uh, until Moses, one of the greatest of all the Jewish leaders ever, came along and uh, a fabulous personality, a genius, a spiritual genius, a giant among all human beings in the world, inspired by his dedication, terrible for any people to be oppressed and certainly knowing that it was terrible for his own people to be oppressed, led them forth from their slavery in Egypt, led them through the wilderness in Sinai, led them to Mount Sinai and presented them with a, a code, a code for behavior. That code for behavior, which we're inclined to call the Torah, the teachings is epitomized often as the Ten Commandments, but it's far more than that. It would be all right if people would follow those Ten Commandments. That might be a good start. But there's far more to Judaism and far more to following after God than, than just keeping the Ten Commandments. Um, but Moses formed up this Jewish people not as a band of ex-slaves, but as a band of people who would be dedicated to serving God. Serving God through, through certain customs and ceremonies to be sure. Thank you. Thank you. If you have to leave, you can leave right now. 
stop in between the breaks. Five seconds. This is the last speaker. If you get out of hand, I'm going to ask you to leave. Okay, it gives me great pleasure again to introduce uh, Mr. Zip Garber. One of the advantages of following another speaker. <clears throat> One of the advantages of uh, following another speaker who, presented, who presents his opinion about a certain religious tradition <clears throat> is that I do not have to retrace some of the concepts that were presented in the name of Judaism and consequently would have the freedom, as it were, to develop other notions which might not have been able to have been devel developed effectively in the course of a general presentation regarding the topic Judaism as Jews understand that religion to be a chosen people. Let me begin with a certain apology and also a very important position that I must take. What you're going to hear for the next 40 minutes is one man's opinion about Judaism. What you're going to hear is one man's understanding of a religious heritage that flows in my very veins and in my very bones that goes back metaphorically 4,000 years. What you're going to hear in the next 40 minutes is only one person's understanding of a religious heritage to which he was born into and also a religious civilization which this individual, namely myself, has chosen to have as my lifestyle until the day I leave this world. What you're going to hear is going to be a little disturbing to some, and what you're going to hear articulates, it might not be what you want to hear as representative of Judaism. I can only say in my opening remarks that this is my own opinion, these are my own feelings, and from that point of view, I respect that you would respect what I have to say, for it's one man's viewpoint one man's thinking process that's going forth. Now, by Jerry Goldstein made reference to a significant holiday of the Jewish year referred to as Yom Kippur. He also made reference to a concept referred to as Teshuvah. The concept of Yom Kippur, 24 books of the Hebrew Bible, is a very strange message. It tells the story of a certain Jew by Jonah, his name, to go to a people referred to as the Assyrians. The Assyrians were a classic people of the ancient Near East, and among their accomplishments, they were able to stomp out and step upon, to use the terminology which I feel comfortable with today, to snuff out different civilizations and different peoples. The Assyrians were also the great destroyers of my people's ancient past. If there is a small Jewish people today, it is because Jews in the course of history, and Jews, whatever geographical space they're able to inhabit, were exposed to, and thus victimized by, crusades, inquisitions, exterminations, and in our own recent memory, the greatest destruction ever inflicted upon any people, the Holocaust. And between 1933 and 1945, the slaughter of one third of my people called the Jews, as the world participated either actively or not actively, and thus were complacent to the greatest murder ever recorded in recorded history. The Assyrians destroyed 10 of the 12 tribes. The greatest destruction of a people was with the Jews is what okay okay yeah okay you're right okay ancient Israel if there are Jews today it is because one or two of these tribes were able to manage and able to survive but the Assyrians were the great Nazis of their day and they destroyed 10 of the 12 tribes of Israel and consequently on this particular day of Yom Kippur the Jew reads a book it's a book which is very simple it's a book which consists only of four chapters it is a book of a Jew who's told to go to Assyria and to preach this very term that Jerry introduced, namely Teshuvah. But honestly, I personally feel the history of the Jewish people, and let this be known as factual, and it's not myth. The Jews are mankind's longest surviving people with a continuous history. There's no other people in this world who has a continuous memory as the Jewish people has. And maybe for that reason, if the world no longer has a Jew, the world would be dwarfed in absence of the presence of a consciousness called the Jews. It doesn't mean that the Jews are superior, and it doesn't mean that the Jews are inferior. It simply means that the Jews have something about themselves which they take self-pride in, and that something, if you will, has been contributed to mankind. What does it say to me, this chosen people business? It says... demeanor just taking note on the points of where these two gentlemen before him are very mistaken and misleading just take note on how you you conduct it you got to conduct it 
I notice I'm a little low, but I'm, I'm going to get it together, family. Hey, I'm important. It says, hey, I've got pride. It says, hey, I've got a heritage. It says, I am meaningful. I'm not just another number, another face in the crowds. If the other cannot respond to it, that is his problem or her problem. It ought not be my problem. On the blackboards, I put several terms, the self and the other, the I and the is. I am the self, if you will, because I'm talking from my vantage points. When I respond to the other, I do not think... Some of you are Gentiles. By this I mean you come from an un-Jewish background. And this type of rhetoric sounds too militant, baby, sounds too weird, too off the board. You don't know Jews who talk this way. Jews do talk this way, and the tragedy is the Jews ought to impress their messages upon others. Because if you want a track record that's able to survive, it is this type of Jewish mentality. It doesn't mean that the Jew is superior, nor does it mean that the Jew is inferior. All he's saying by all this rhetoric is, I am just as important as you. And by saying that, he helps himself and has the opportunity. Jacob has his curses. From the birth until the end, every significant episode about the patriarch Jacob is introduced by a curse. Jacob masters the curse, converts it into a blessing. Try to follow me right now. The paragon of Jacob is very, very important for me. It's very important for Jews. They call themselves after Jacob. They call themselves Israel. Jacob is first Israel. When his name is changed, your name will no longer be Jacob. It will be called Israel. When Jacob called Israel occurs, you have to understand what happens. I'm not going to be scientific because I can't be scientific. But at the same time, however non-rational I might sound to all of you, Zeb Garber is not anti-rational. Not with reference of the God of Israel. Jews cannot have that opinion in my opinion. cannot have that position in my opinion because of the historical awareness of Jews that the all-powerful God and the God of promises can oftentimes be embarrassed by questions of how is it that the innocent seem to suffer and how is it that Holocaust seems to occur to every little Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob being destroyed the way they were. Because to take that position from a Jewish point of view would imply that God and the devil, as it were, Hitler and others, are handshakes together, are partners in the destruction of innocence. Hence, I feel comfortable with that teaching of Judaism, which is the very root of what we're talking about, that says you're not an amen sayer of God. That says that God creates the imperfect world and it's man's job to make it perfect. Which says that man and God are partners. God did his job. Man, you now do your job. That says that God creates and man redeems. That de-emphasizes the creed and plays up the deeds. That that's the bottom line. You fight with God. You hear the phrase, Israel. Fighting with man and also constantly fighting with God. And because you know that you're valuable, in the end, you prevail. You want to know something, people? That's what God wants. And when you don't fight with God, then you ain't doing your Jewish thing. Am Yisrael. If there's one phrase you'll learn from my rhetoric, it's this phrase. Um, the nation is... All Jews what you want. Kikes, Makis, Jews, they've been known by all kinds of names. The one name that people, so to speak, aren't aware of, that is pristine, that is original, is this phrase transliterated into English as Am Israel. You are a nation, Israel. You are a people. You are the people that fights with man and fights with God. The word Am, dear people, if I write it in Hebrew, also spells out the Hebrew phrase together and with togetherness. What is a Jew? It is the sum total of religion, culture, spiritual, physical, national, ethnic, everything. Togetherness makes Israel. And it's that unity of diversity, which is what I understand to be the chosen concept and why Jews have the track record that they do. Jews are mankind's eternal people.
fact that Jews and Jewish people, we're not speaking on a type of person, like a, like a Spaniard or an African, or you see what I'm saying? It's not, it's not that. It's a creed. It's like, it's a belief system, a collective understanding, if you will. A creed is the best way to, to describe the, uh, the concept of being a Jew. But when we speak on the roots of this, this culture, Jew, you got to understand these are uh, color codes used loosely, family. Color codes used loosely. These are the black man and woman of the planet, the original black man and woman of the planet. When we speak on uh, the concept and culture or creed of a Jew, described as small, dark peoples. Very simple. But now I'm going to let the master teacher do what he do best. He going to break it down. And I'm a listen. So here we go. Thank you, Mr. Garber. Uh, this one claim from my point of view, I like to say, um, I hope people don't get the impression that this is a fight or this is a, this is a learning institution here, and we're here to learn from each speaker. So I hope you don't get the impression that this person's right, this person's wrong. So we're just all here to learn. So that's why I just want to make the point. For the people who came in late, I'd like to introduce our next speaker again. He's a West Coast Regional Minister for the, Na for the uh, Elijah, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad of the National Islams. National Islams. Thank you. <laughs> He's Associate Professor of Pan-African Studies at Cal State Los Angeles. He has traveled extensively throughout Europe, Asia, and Africa. Two times lecturing in South Africa, Special guest for two years for I I I Uganda President Idi Amin. Two times traveled to Israel, four times to Egypt, and three times to Mecca. Would you come welcome Dr. Rashad? divine guide in the person of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we thank Allah and his messenger for preparing a champion for the black man and black woman's cause, the most dynamic and charismatic, and certainly the guide of our day made that way by God and his messenger, Minister Louis Farrakhan, in their names I greet you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum and to others shalom alaikum the topic is the chosen people what a topic before we can go into the chosen people we have to ask who's doing the choosing 
<laughs> because, as Professor Garber has said, he spoke from his own individual point of view. There would be others, if we had everyone to speak, who would speak from their own individual Once again, once again, family, I'm not going to interrupt too much more, I promise. But once again, Arthur Abernathy, the author of The Jew, a Negro, and also Dr. Ben Joe Cannon's We the Black Jews are two good reference points to start at when it comes to this topic of conversation and uh, your own studies, your own research. That'll lead you to other authors as well. But those are two great uh, book references. Point of view. On, everybody would, as the old folks say among black people, everybody would pick and choose. Right. Now what we want to know is, who's doing the choosing? What are they choosing for? And we've got to look at the old scripture that says, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the ending. Now, what beginning? Right. Who's beginning? Right. The beginning of what? Right. So it is proper for us to begin at the beginning. Right. Right. Judaism would not exist if Africa did not exist. Right. Islam did not exist. Right. Christianity would not exist if Africa did not exist. Right. And the white man and white woman himself and herself, and I certainly mean no disrespect, but you were warned that you must honor your mother and your father, right. that your days may be long yeah. upon the land which the Lord God. man and the white woman, be they Jew or Gentile, and let's get that mess straight before we even get started. Every Caucasian, every white man and woman who is not a Jew is a Gentile. When we study what is called etymology, the origin, the beginning, or the root of terms and terminology. Isn't it interesting that the root, the base or the root, the prefix of the term Gentile is the same as the prefix, the base, base or the root of the term general. All white folks who do not ascribe and believe to the tenets of Judaism are considered white folks in general. <laughs> They're considered Gentiles. I mean, there's no question about it. Now, let us proceed. Since we've got that out of the way and got that straight, mm -hmm. we don't have to especially, except for specific purposes during these few moments, separate the Jew from other white folks. All white folks are white folks. <laughs> but for specific purposes, and to adhere to the debate topic, we will have to make a distinction because the Jews have indeed caught hell all over the world. That people that are... Let me put that on the board. If, if it's not insulting to anyone, and even if it is, I have to say, so-called Jews. And then I'm going to go after this thing. So-called Jew. You see, the Jew is indeed an ancient people. That's right. The Jew is indeed an original people. But the question is, are you the real Jew? The question is, those of you of white pigmentation and white pigmentation, are you that original Jew from Abraham and from Moses? That's the question. That's the question that we hope to answer today. Because when you hide behind the term Jew, you are hiding behind something that the cover has to be pulled off of today. 
Now, the Jew has caught hell, the so-called Jew. The white Jew all over the planet Earth. No one can deny that. But now the question is, why has the white Jew caught hell? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, under the searchlight of truth, shows us why the white Jew has caught hell. He teaches us that the white Jew has caught hell because you represent that group or that circle of people who adhered to the laws and the teachings and the customs that Moses brought to you. That Moses actually gave you a sense of civilization. Moses actually gave to you a sense of culture. And Moses actually gave to you an edge on the rest of the Gentiles. Moses taught you, put you out front. Right. And when you're out front and the spotlight is on you, mm -hmm. you meet with the anger, the resentment, the jealousy, and the scorn of your other white sister and brother. Right. Yeah. Now, who is this chosen people? What beginning can we ascribe to them? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the white man and white woman are biologically and genetically a grafted mutant people who come up out of the original black man and white It is biologically and genetically impossible for the recessive white man and recessive white woman, Muhammad teaches us, to produce the dominant yellow baby. Right. It is biologically and genetically impossible for the recessive yellow man and yellow woman to produce the dominant brown baby. Right. It is biologically and genetically impossible for the recessive brown man and woman to produce the dominant black baby. Right. But that black man and the black woman, they can be blue black, purple black. Black is 150 million midnight. Scientifically, and since everybody hasn't been scientific, I think I should be. The root of the term science comes from the term seal, which means to know. We can't just get up here and run off at the mouth and give some personal opinion. Now we're dealing with the lives of the people of the planet Earth. We can't just get up here and talk. This is just me. So what? That is just you. We want science. And science comes from the root, which means to know. That's right. We've got to have facts. And before this is over, you will see that this is not the ranting of a, uh, an angry, hateful, resentful, wild-eyed, bald-headed militant. <laughs> but you will meet with unmistakable, irrefutable, undeniable, and indis facts, proof, and evidence, and then we'll have an opportunity to question it before you go. Amen. Now, go ahead, the black man and black woman, if the seed runs wild in the womb of the black woman, or mutates, from that mutation she can even produce an albino, something that is 180 degrees different from both of them. And that black man and black woman you can find brown, you can find red, you can find yellow, and you can even produce that which is whiter than white. That is why when you go among black people, I know it's been amazing and, and has really, really puzzled most white folks here in the audience, is to see so many shades of black people. I had all of them supposed to be black. Here's one black, black, black. Here's another one, medium black. Here's another one, light black. Here's another one, teased and tan. Here's another one, caramel brown. Here's another one that's bright. As they say, damn near white. And another one, whiter than that. Here comes another one with blue eyes. Here comes another one with green eyes. Here comes one with brown eyes. You say, wow, these people, they look like everybody. 
why do these black people look like everybody? You can go among the black people and you can find the likeness of the Chinese there. You can go among the Japanese there. You can go among the black people and find the likeness of the European among them. Why is this? Because the black man and the black woman are absolutely the original people of the planet Earth. We are indeed your father and your mother. And you would not be here if it were not for us. It's fitting that this be done on Dr. King's birthday. Because we love Dr. King, and we love the work that Dr. King did in sincerity. But Dr. King was wrong, and we must assess his wrongness in his proper light. Another subject for another time. Dr. King would not have agreed to what you were clapping to. And you know I'm telling you the truth. Dr. King held hands with the so-called Jew, or the white Jew. And we want to see if what the rabbi said is indeed true, that the Jew has actually worked with us, marched with us, <laughs> held hands with Jesse Jackson, held hands with the late Dr. Martin Luther King, held hands with uh, the Urban League man, Vernon Jordan and Roy Wilkins, and how the Jews have supported Black causes. We we suffer like you. We 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 been persecuted. We we understand the the, 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 the black people's plight. I want to hold my point. No, you have a question at the end. Just a second. What's fair to everybody? When those two gentlemen spoke. As soon as he got to speaking, really getting into what he's supposed to be getting into, they had to interrupt him. They did not interrupt the two previous speakers at all. Not at all. But as soon as he got to chopping it up, they couldn't take it. They couldn't hear it coming from him. The fact that he's standing on it. It's some bass in his voice when he speaks. <laughs> They don't, you notice that, right? Okay, okay. Just, you know, from time to time, I'm gonna stop this shit and I gotta acknowledge little things. Everybody was obedient. They listened quietly. They came to know learn. Now, I'm listening to you and I wanna learn from you. But I find that we're having rabble rouses in silence. Everybody was quiet. Everybody was listening. 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 But we can't keep the audience from this. No, I agree with what it is not a fair assimilation. The gentleman said so. We're here to learn. And I'm here to learn from us. Please have a seat and let us proceed. We're not having any problems. It's moving along smoothly. <laughs> All right. No, ma'am, I'm not going to take any questions until I'm finished. Nobody else took questions. That's right. That's right. That's right. You can't have the audience quiet. They love the truth. Respond if you choose. The Jew, the so-called Jew, is not used to losing. And never wants it to appear that there is superior knowledge on the scene. Never. Come on. Let's go after this. Yes, sir. Superior knowledge. That's exactly what it's about. Because if these people who... And yeah, I absolutely coach dude. Absolutely. These same people, all they have to do is study. They can study the religions. The religions speak on the origins. <laughs> and and Kala Muhammad, the master teacher, will get into that. But these are just simple things. But people choose to stay in their ignorance. They just can't hear from a strong black man who's going to stand on it. He's not going to look down when he speaks. 
He's not going to lighten it up for your feelings. If people were to just go study, it doesn't take too long. They would understand what he's speaking and what he's going to continue to speak through this video is nothing but a fact. I want to hold that point on the Jews and whether they have really worked behind our causes and the cause for them working behind our causes. That's right. I want to hold that. I want to go back to the chosen people, the original people of God. When we look at it, as we said earlier, you can find the likeness of every people on the earth in the black man and in the black woman. But you haven't been in a white meeting and find all kinds of shades of people sitting up in the meeting. Here's a real, real black one sitting over in the corner and a Jewish mother and a Jewish father claim that real black nappy head went over in the corner and say that he's a Jew or that he's white from their loins. But you, black man and woman, produce all. You produce every color in the color spectrum because that is a sign in you from Almighty God to let you know that you are the father and mother. This being the case, and this being true, we want to go back to the role of Africa in the rise of Judaism. The role of Africa in the rise of Judaism. Abraham was mentioned, and Moses was mentioned. Let us take a look at these two great ones and see what we can find on Abraham and Moses. When we look at Abraham and Moses, we find Abraham, sometimes called the original Jew, grew up in Ur, a city in Chaldea, according to Genesis 11, 27 through 29, or what is called today, as they will bear me witness, Mesopotamia which was east of what is, was called Palestine. The ancient inhabitants were the Sumerians, who just like the early Canaanites, the Natufians, were noted as being of African ancestry. Come on. According to Professor W.J. Perry, the myths, legends, and traditions of the Sumerians include their origin as Ethiopia also. That in fact, and in effect, Sumerians were one and the same people. The Sumerians established the earliest civilization of that region. They started agricultural practices, including irrigation, built cities, tended cattle, and invented a form of writing, all inherited by the Semitic inhabitants. At the age of 75, according to the Old Testament, Abraham, accompanied by his wife Sarah, and a small band of Herubus, or Hebrews, meaning crossed over, they entered Egypt as the result of a great to Genesis 12, 4 through 10, possibly to wait until conditions improved at home, but left Egypt soon after. Following Sarah's death, Abraham took on another wife, Keturah, who was definitely an African, according to Genesis 25 and 1. And the children of that union, Zimran, Jakshan, Medan, Median, Ishkba, and Shuka, must have been African in appearance if this his child by Sarah, Isaac also. Also, the Bible relates that Abraham made a child named Ishmael by Hagar, an African maid of Sarah's who was most likely African too. From what has been mentioned about the history of the Canaan region, it's possible that all of Abraham's descendants were African. <laughs> now, many go on to say that Moses was a Jew. <laughs> Moses very clearly was an Egyptian. And the very Torah that the so-called Jew believes in bears witness that Moses was indeed an Egyptian. Let us turn to Exodus and see if Moses was a Jew or an Egyptian. Second chapter of Exodus, the 19th through the 21st verses. Let's take a look at it. And 
And they came to Ruel, their father, is the seven daughters of Ruel. This is after Moses, who didn't practice nonviolence. When Moses found the people being persecuted, Moses killed one of the ones who was persecuting the people. And then he had to flee for his life. And there he got refuge in the land where daughters. And the father asked his daughters, how is it that you, how is it that you are come so soon? You come back so quickly today. And they said, an Egyptian, who? <laughs> an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. Drove the shepherds away and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughters, and where is this Egyptian? Why is it that you have left the man behind? Call him that he may eat bread with us. And Moses was content to come and eat bread with them and to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses the Torah, his daughter, in marriage. Now, the Torah itself clearly states that Moses was an Egyptian. I mean, there's not very much arguing we can do with that. On tour in Israel, I've been twice, and the guide that took us throughout the area took us, showed us different busts and statues of Moses, and uh, there where they keep the, uh, the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, right in that vicinity, and showed him as a very dark, bronze-complexioned man, and I asked him specifically, I said, do the people of this land respect Moses as being black? He said, yes, it's common knowledge. <laughs> they respect him as being black. Then we have another scripture that says Moses was fearful that he could not meet Pharaoh, that he was not eloquent enough. So the scriptures say God told Moses to take his hand and stick it in his bosom. And then Moses took his hand out of his bosom and it turned as white as snow. <laughs> and then it said God told him to stick his hand back. And he stuck his hand back. And it turned back like it was at first, which means it was other than white as snow right. at first. But let's Make it move that to the side for a second. We want to go back to the origin of this. The Jews, as they are called, the original Jews that were in Egypt were no doubt a people of African descent and African origin. Now, which came this Johnny come lately Jew. Where did he come from? When did he come in the picture? He is a European who after the grafting process took place in the Holy Land was driven There's a chalk. We got no white chalk. Everything white running nowadays. He was driven into the caves and hills of Europe. The prefix EU means caves and hillsides. Rope is the rope to bind in. They were confined to the caves and hills of Europe, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, for approximately 2,000 years. There they went savage in the caves and hills of Europe. They crawled around on their all fours. They ate, they ate juniper roots. They ate their meat raw with the blood running out of them. Right. They just knock an animal in the head and jump on him and savagely bite him and eat him. Oh, right in the caves and hills of Europe. And leave the whole animal's decomposing body and the stench from that body coming up in the cave. They would do their number one bathroom duties. <laughs> number one and number two right in the cave after leaving the whole animal in spoke on this before why it's funny when foreign when the foreigners call us savages or barbarians it's a game of deflection reflection defense it's like a i'm rubber you're glue type of situation but they made sure it's stuck on us mind you the same people that call our, our culture and our community and our history barbarians pagans savages were literally these things and this is why these things came about. You dig what I'm saying? When the world was flourishing, these motherfuckers, the foreigners, this is what I call them, were living like animals, like the beasts that they are, that they are. 
<laughs> I, I don't know any other way to get it through. Just notice, and once again, Khalid Muhammad is right on point. Yeah, and that's why they, I'm, I'm glad you put that in there, uh, King King, the Jewish motherfuckers. Now, remember that when we speak on Jews, we're not talking about like a, like a nationality of people, like a, like a genetic people or some shit. It's not none of that. I, 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 and the reason I say that is because I know people get that confused when we speak. We automatically do that word association shit and, and apply it to like it's a, like a nationality or a, 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 a genetics of people. No, it's a creed. That's the best word I can use. It's a creed, a, 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 a shared understanding or belief, if you will. You dig what I'm saying? the great emancipator or civilizer of the white race that gave them knowledge, that gave them culture, that gave them refinement and civilization. And this people who call themselves Jews today benefited from the teachings of Moses, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us more than any other of the Gentiles or those who did not follow Moses' law. And then they became hated by the rest of the white folks of the world because everywhere they went, they had Moses teaching in his law and his refinement rooted in them. <laughs> so they would go right up in that society and before you knew it, that Jew had taken over the, he was influential in the monetary circle. He was influential in the whatever form of media and communication that existed there. He was influential in every major branch where there was to be any influence. The Jew had eased right up in it, the so-called Jew, and supplanted the society. So then whites became angry, the other Gentiles. They became angry with this so-called Jew who had benefited from Moses' teaching. So everywhere he went, he was kicked out. Everywhere he went, he was kicked out. Hitler hated the Jews in Germany because the Jews were so shrewd, so sharp, so wise. And the Germans, the Aryan race were claiming to be superior to all white folks. But theirs was just a claim. The Jew was controlling. The Jew was influencing. The Jew was manipulating while the Germans had their chest stuck out. But no egotistical majority will allow a minority to rule them for very long. So all Hitler, another devil, rose up and started trying to crush the Jewish influence and power that had grown up right in the midst of his people in Germany. He couldn't do it right away. He moved over a period of time until ultimately it finished or culminated in killing millions of his white brothers who are called Jews today. Now I heard Professor Garber say that no other people in essence had suffered more and that they lost 10 of the 12 tribes in Australia. Oh. You have not suffered like the black man and black woman of America. There is no way on earth you can say you have suffered. What is six million? We lost 250 million in the Middle Passage just between Africa and America coming over on the slave. man of the now. Read Dr. Walter Rodney how Europe underdeveloped Africa. Read H.G. Wells. Read Sigmund Freud who tells you that Moses was an Egyptian. Let's go to Freud. Come on. Come on. First, the noted Egyptologist James Bristis pointed out that Moses' name was not Hebrew as conventionally accepted, but it was an Egyptian word. Musa, or Mosa, or Mose, meaning child or boy son, to which a prefix of a god's name no doubt had been attached and lost over the years. Both Sigmund Freud in his book Moses and Monotheism and Howard Fast and the Jews agree 
on the Egyptian origins of this name. To begin with, how I said, and to begin with, uh, James Breasted said, talking panel on um, Adolf Hitler and the whole uh, the Nazi Jew Holocaust situation and this is the point and these are the reasons I was making these points on the grown man talking panel about the uh, color codes used loosely for anybody out there who's sensitive about that on the, uh, the black Jews and this is it just dawned on me we had that conversation but I was making these same points to a degree uh, on the grown man talking panel. So uh, I, I think it's funny how it just tied in like that, man. The circumstances of his birth as, as portrayed by the Old Testament, really betrayed, are pure fantasy. Exodus 11, 1 through 10. Actually, in ancient times, and I want to stop, because the rabbi said, he said he didn't believe that it was all scientific. He said it himself. He said he didn't believe it was all factual and scientific, but he believed that it was a compilation, in essence, he said, of the myths and those elements of the culture that held his people together and gave them a sense of belief in their God. I quoted him word for word if I have to go back and pull or lift his exact quote. So he admits that he knows that it wasn't scientific. Let's see how unscientific it really is. It says here, actually in ancient times, African myths about finding a baby in the water, as they say about Moses, were quite common, especially in honoring national heroes. About 2,800 BC, for example, over 1,000 years before Moses even existed, such a myth was created about Sargon of Agade, founder of Babylon. There is a similar myth about the Egyptian god Horus and other famous men such as Cyrus, Romulus, Oedipus, Paris, Telephus, uh, Perseus, Gilgamesh, Amphion, and Zethros. It is likely he was the child of the Pharaoh's own daughter, for he was raised in the royal household. Moses became learned in the wisdom of Egypt and later became a priest of the Egyptian faith receiving his theological education at Heliopolis. So the important fact about Moses' origins was not his color, however. Moses gives the Hebrews an African religion. After Moses returned to Egypt, he somehow became the spokesman for the Hebrews and introduced them to a monotheistic type of religion, which he had learned as an Egyptian from the teachings of King Tut's brother, Akhenaten, and which was previously unknown to them before they came in among our people. The miracles and other exodus phenomena could also be drawn from old legends in Africa about the sun, about the sun god. He had a magic rod which could change, be changed into a snake. You remember that story of the casting of the rod? He, and could be used to draw water from a rock as well. You remember that story in the Torah. He crossed the Red Sea himself without getting wet. And he divided the waters of the rivers, Orontes and Hydaspus, uh, uh, Hydaspus, by the touch of his rod and crossed that dry footed too. Now I want to document that. Bible myth and their parallels in other religions, P.W. Dawn, New York Prep, Truth Seeker Company. It goes on to say, there are many examples of older African myths or other writings which allude to the same concepts used in the Exodus story, especially in regard to the parting of waters or other barriers to accept a group's escape uh, and the death of his pursuers. But the, the Jews' account was not worth the Egyptian scribes even noting. It says here that there's no record. I've been to Egypt four times. There's no record of this stuff anywhere except in the hearts and minds of the so-called Jews 
who exist around the world who are trying to establish a homeland for themselves, which is a question that we definitely don't want to leave out before we go today, the Jewish homeland between them Jews and them Arabs. And I know you would think that we would take the position of the Arabs. We don't take the position of either one, because both of you are imposters and neither of you have any business in the area. The real land question hasn't even been raised yet. I see the audience is thinning out. Hey, we didn't, I don't know who chose this topic, but we came not to be, not to be disrespectful, but we came to fight. We're true. Right. Because you have lied to black people too long. Right. So I didn't wear any gun or anything. None of the brothers wear any guns. We don't have any weapons. Right. We didn't come to shoot from the hip. We came to shoot from the lip. presenting what's so lethal about it is it's not just him speaking it these are uh foreign scientists and and scholars and researchers as well this ain't just Kali muhammad a strong uh disciplined intelligent black man speaking no this is the foreign scientists as well the former researchers as well and it eats them up it eats them up it eats them up because you know the first, uh, you know the first reaction is mostly based off of who's saying what, and they can't stand that. But to go against it would be to go against who they are trying to support in the belief system and the lies that they are trying to support, and so they they're stuck on on, on a double edged sword, and it eats them up, and and I love it, I love it, because when you stand on facts, when you stand on truth. And, and that can be shown and proven. When you show and prove, oh, they, anybody in general, they hate it. They hate it. When you can just talk that talk, it's a different story. But when you can show and prove and it's been, and it's already been shown and proven, oh, it hurts. It hurts. The concrete evidence that still exists that white scholars are digging up today. From the walls of the text of Egypt, still there for you to go and examine, hmm. where it says in David's so-called psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. You remember that one, huh? Let's see where he got it from. The Egyptian god Horus was Lord as the leader of the flock, and 
and guardian of the fold because he represented the first who rose again from the dead. Uh-oh, we even got a resurrection story here. We even have a virgin birth story in Osiris and who? And his mother, Isis. The first virgin birth story and a resurrection. Today's people are cowards. Today's people, you know, have no have no backbone. And it's been a long time since they dropped their nuts. You dig what I'm saying? That's what, you know, that's what bugs me, man. The fact that no matter what the play was, no matter what the play was behind it, it, it kills me that these Malcolm X and Khalid Muhammad specifically was taken out by one of our own. I understand this war. I understand the strategy that was in place to do it. I'm not talking about that, though. It, it just irks me that these two gentlemen, the two gentlemen I just spoke on, aren't still around because these motherfuckers weren't going to, you know, fold. Today's people going to fold. Whoopi going to fold. Nick going to fold. Why? Because living that luxurious life means more than anything. Being Nick Cannon means everything. Being Whoopi Goldberg means everything. Ain't even her name, though. <laughs> it's not her platform. You know, all these things. Today's person is a coward a lot of the times. And that's just what it is, man story with horrors. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam got to go back to the black man and black woman. Right. That is why we who follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad do not follow Arabs. When we say Islam, we mean the nature of the black man and black woman at a time when there were no religious labels. Right. Our nature is what we're dealing with. There were not labels until this new people, white people, came on the planet 6,000 years ago. Then prophets started. Then you had to come up with books because the people that came from the caves and hills of Europe had a concupiscent nature, a reprobate mind, a natural inclination to go against everything that was natural. So you had to have books for them, Bible, Torah, Holy Quran. They had to read all the time. You have to take them through rituals and they stand up in front of walls and the Arabs bow down. You have to take them something to put them in check. Come on. Because their inclination was to rule everything at any cost. The Jews have never been a philanthropic, good-hearted, good-willed, fair-dealing people with black people. You helped start the slave trade. Right. I'll hold that point. Don't let me forget it. I'll document it with three or four or five or six dollars. My goodness. It goes on to say the valley of the shadow of death from the song. Our intent of valley of the dead in the ritual where those who suffer. Look at him getting little. Look at them get a little. Like, no, we're not having this. The ish at the end of that Jewish. Oh, no, no, no. Fuck that. Fuck that. We're getting out of here. We're getting. Look at them get a little. Instead of being open to actual factuals, by them getting little, shows how ignorance is bliss. Instead of face. Correction, I'd rather just, you know, run with this shit that I've been running with because this it feels real good, and I like that better. I like that. Yeah, I got him. I got him. I got him. I'm a cameraman, too. I'm not only a DJ. I'm a cameraman, too. What you mean? But look at him get a little. Like, no, no, no. That ish, that ish, I'm all about that ish. I don't want to hear about the Jew part. Just give me the ish. Just give me the ish. <laughs> and death are buried forever. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. In ritual, reading from the hieroglyphics, I take my rest in divine domain. 
as the still waters. In Egyptian mythology, they are the waters of Hetep, the waters of rest and peace. Thou preparest a table from the Egyptian hieroglyphics. A table was prepared upon Mount Hetep and piled with heaps of perishable food. The house of the Lord is designated by speaker in ritual, the mansion where food is produced for me, the mansion lifted up by shoes, the paradise of am Kemen, all coming from the hieroglyphics, the paths of righteousness. Two paths led up to the mansion called the double path. He restored my soul from the hieroglyphics it reads, my soul is with me. Now, it goes on to point out that the, that the, many of the other Psalms of David, the 104th and others, that Akhenaten, when you study the scripts of the Psalms that Akhenaten wrote, who was of the 18th dynasty of Egypt, that you can copy directly from Akhenaten and put the Psalms of David right next to, next to what Akhenaten wrote hundreds of years before David existed, and it's like you would just plagiarize by people who came in and read. The foreigner has created, listen to the words I'm using, family. The foreigner has not created, created, created anything original to the world other than destruction. You go through creation. Creation means the original, you know, the blueprint from nothing to something. The foreigner has took what already existed from us, obviously, all around the world, obviously, and tweaked it and built it to their, you know, their nature, which is destructive. So if you go through history, education, all the sciences, uh, medicines, whatever you want to go to, and you get down to the root of it, it's destructive. Everything that they, you know, the sciences practiced in, in modern day, if you will, in its origins, in its etymology, in its roots, it's not only beneficial, it's beneficial because it comes from a people of balance and harmony. That's the melanated man and woman. History, all they did was take it and like King King said, remixed it. Pushed it like dope to us dope heads over here because we are dope heads. As a child with dope heads, we grew up to be dope heads because nobody gave us anything to get us off of the dope. But the master teachers were here but of course, they're not going to promote that because that's how you get off of this stupid ass shit called lies, propaganda, manipulation, hypnosis. You dig what I'm saying? Studied among our people and started a religion in the midst of our people right in Egypt, right in Africa. There are many others. Solomon's Proverbs. It goes on here to compare Solomon's Proverbs with ancient African and Egyptian writings and gives you examples, a whole page of them, of what Solomon said in his Proverbs and what you can find concrete proof of still there in the text of the pyramid and the, uh, the text of the Book of the Dead and others throughout the valley. I hate to keep stopping it, but that's another thing. That's another thing. Our shit is written in stone. It can't be erased. You feel me? It can't be written over. It's in stone. It has last. See, we're so advanced. We understand. Man, cut, cut, cut it out. Ooh, we, ooh, we. The kings. I have 10 minutes. But I'm going to have to stop this for a second and go into something else. Why do the Jews always pretend to back black organizations? Why? Because the Jews have used black people as cannon fodder. Have pushed us out front on the front line to fight for things that they wanted in America. So they backed Negro organizations, not black organizations. They backed Negro organization. Right, Negro, organization. when you study the etymology of Greek and Latin, means dead. That's right. They backed Negro organization.
organizations and Negro leaders. That's right. Dr. Martin Luther King, SCLC. I mean, we've got to tell the truth. Let's look at it. Second place. NAACP, according to Dr. Ben Yakanen of Ethiopia, who uh, knows quite a bit about Judaism. In fact, his whole family grew up and is a Falasha Jew. But he teaches at Cornell. He says the NAACP and Urban League were owned by Jews in the first place. The NAACP was created by Jews. The Spin Guard brothers, Joel and old Arthur. And they ran it until one of them died and the other one retired. Then it was turned over to another Jew, a cousin in Boston. And he later resigned and then it went into weekly the hands of some blacks. So in answer to your question, any black organizations that Jews have primarily been in, they have and were in the controlling position because they controlled the money in it. All right, I want to cover just, I've got to really jump here now. Take your time now. No, I can't take my time. <laughs> Points out here that PUSH, Operation PUSH, SCLC, Urban League, NAACP, Bayard Rustin, Jesse Jackson, all of them, and Dr. King were backed by Jews, and they kept Dr. King out front. Now today, Stevie Wonder is in Washington, D.C., marching for white folks to accept Dr. King's birthday as a national holiday. You're going to the very people who killed Dr. That's King, right. begging them That's to recognize right. you and give you a holiday. Right. If the white man wanted to give you a holiday, he would give it to you without marching. Right. If he respected Dr. King, and if he respected you, you wouldn't have to spend a thousand dollars and go and stand in the snow right. in front of the White House. He would automatically. <laughs> Our image on TV greatly harmed by the Jews. The Jews control and influence NBC, CBS, and the major network. Right. But they are so sly and subtle, they hide behind the That's team. an insult and that is bullshit. They say you can tell that when you throw a rock in a crowd of dogs, the only one that hollers is the one that get hit. That's right. <laughs> white boys, them white boys hurting. Them white boys hurting. They don't got no ammunition. They don't got no lies they can tell now, cause. Uh, the master teacher, Khaled Muhammad, went over every detail, in detail. Look at them, they hurt. They, they, they thinking like, yo, old boy on the right with the striped shirt, he like, yo, you want to jump this nigga? Old boy with the glasses, like, no, he'll whoop our ass. We just got to take this one like men. They mad. Look at him. It's blurry and you can see he red. He red. He looking at he looking at him like man, hold up, I'm, we gonna have to jump this motherfucker, man. We we can't lie no more. He done took away and exposed our the the ish part of that Jewish shit. Oh man, what we about to do? We can't call him no names because he'll probably whoop both our asses. We just gotta sit here, looking goofy. Is we gonna get a turn? I, I don't know. I, I just put your head down. Don't look at him. Don't make eye contact. Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill, you have a temper. I think this one is not. I think you should sit this one. No, fuck that. <laughs> look at my camera work is amazing. I love it. He looking at him mad. We just going to have to sit here and take this ass whooping. <laughs> to the degree that the majority of the prime time television programming has been asemitic. They sitting, they sitting right next to him. They feel the <laughs> they feel the energy of his voice. Oh man. Oh. Kyle Muhammad just sunning him. Just sunning him. Sit there and take it like a man. 
a feeling taken like a man. Look at three networks, NBC, ABC, and CBS. One would normally think, according to the major male image projected, that the networks are white Anglo-Saxon Protestant to the root, but not the fact. The most known and respected images of the airwaves are Walter Cronkite, Eric Severide, David Brinkley, John Chancellor, Harry Reisner, and Howard K. Smith. Only until very recently has a Jew been able to break into the elite anchor seat, and she is Barbara Walters, no more for her womanhood in a man's occupation, and for her one million dollar salary than for her Jewishness. Stephen D. Isaac has pointed out. Able as they are, the Cronkites, Chancellors, and Smith have served as an emphasis for the historical accident that all three commercial networks grew up under brilliant Jews. The National Broadcasting Company, as part of the General David Sarnoff's Radio Corporation of America, the Columbia Broadcasting Company under Leonard Golderson, after it split with NBC's Old Blue Network. Yet it is not enough to document the backroom precedence of the network. We influence such as Ali Abdel, or uh, Apple, or uh, Herbert Kaplan, Mike Wallace. Sander Van Cook, Howard Cosell, mm. David Schoenberg, and others who carefully hide their Jewishness, which in effect makes their reporting seem more objective and impartial, especially when their subject matter is Jewish-related, Israel, Zionism, or Negroes. The major creator of today's ethnic programming has been Norman Lear. He is responsible for the most right. hideous and degrading programs and other Jews who back the network to be aired on a weekly basis. Right. The Jeffersons, Good Times, right. with the silly character JJ, right. who has no redeeming value at all. All he can do is have a dynamite. Let us look at the print media since somebody screamed that it's a lie. Gary Talese, in his important book, The Kingdom and the Power, pulls the covers off of the New York Times. The Oaks shoot uh, the Oaks Suitsburger family to issue apologies for their Jewishness. New York Times. After all, to paraphrase Talis, the Times is owned by the Jews, edited by the Catholics, and read by the Protestants. The New York Times is without a doubt one of the most important papers in the Western world and is religiously read by government leaders and policy makers every day. The Times is not a layman's paper or a paper for blacks, but it goes out of its way to be labeled as a Jewish newspaper. But despite its critical yet unswerving supporter of Israel, Jewishism, Jewish concerns, and Zionism, it goes on to say that the Washington Post, it goes on to deal with Newsweek, it goes on to deal with Time Magazine, it goes on to deal with the influence of the Jews throughout the media. Not only that, my last point is I gather my stuff, is the unholy alliance that Israel has with South Africa. Oh, hey, from the very beginning. Don't tell me anything about your Torah. Don't tell me anything about you following Moses or you following what God has taught you. You helped set up South Africa in its early stages. And if you push me, I'll give you the dates and the times I have it right here. And I'm not bluffing. Early stages were in South Africa. And you're there now. I've been all over South Africa. You helped, you won the gold. That's why you got all the jewelry stores all over America now. Gold that comes from the gold mines where my brothers and sisters are threatening me and me. You were in Uganda. You even considered Uganda as a national homeland. You considered Argentina as a homeland. And finally you decided on Palestine. If you're going to be promised something by God, you don't have to run all over the world looking for a place. If God gives it to you, God gives it to you, and you don't have to look for a place. You can't make any excuses for Jacob wrestling with the man of God. You can't excuse that away. Hell, you don't wrestle with God, man, and hold up God's business? Right. Israel is not a good name. His name was Jacob at first. He detains a man of God, beats on the man, fights the 
gonna let you go until you give me something. So the man gave him a name, Israel. Now you have to deal with what that name means. So family, <clears throat> it's not over. It's not over by any means. But I played this and spoke on this before and, and, and I played this now. So that way you can correct your way of thinking. If you were misunderstood on who the Jews or what the Jews are or, or who they were, I hope this video uh, get, gave great insight. Because word association is real. And, and a lot of times we associate Jew, Jewish Jews to, to like mean something that it's not. Uh, earlier... I gave reference uh, reference points. Arthur Abernathy. The book is called The Jew, a Negro. Another book by J.A. Rogers. Nature Knows No Color Line. Uh, and, I, and I'm pulling these books off my shelf. Another book. It's a three-part uh, series of books called Sex and Race, Volume 1 to 3. Get that book. Also, Dr. Ben Joe Cannon, Yo Cannon, uh, Black Man of the Nile. I have that book. I've showed that book. It's a big blue book. And also, Dr. Ben Joe Cannon, We the Black Jews. So once again, We the Black Jews, Black Man of the Nile, Sex and Race, Volume 1 to 3, Nature Knows No Color Line, and The Jew a Negro. Those are all great reference points and all great starting points. I got all the books, most of those books as well. I have on my Discord uh, in the library section, which is free. You can go there, download the PDF for free, and have the books yourself and do the studies. Now we'll be getting into the question and answer part of the uh, the debate. And you can only imagine these, these foreigners is ready, locked and loaded with nothing but ignorance and emotions. So with that being said, make sure to hit the like, share, subscribe, uh, hit the cash app, the PayPal. Check out the Patreon. Let's get into the questions and answers. And you know they coming with emotions and ignorance. this event very well so i just every time I, I noticed that every time i watch this that always sticks out to me the young man hosted this debate very well can you wait Is that a question? Uh, I'm not going to 
I'm just trying to make a statement. They don't even have questions. But what you want to do is get you on the phone. If you have a question, please come to this call. All right, but that's just a question. Come on, I'll stand over there. So I can get you on the camera. All right. So I'll let them stand over here. Okay. Stand over with it. Are you all this there? Uh, I'm a Muslim. Dr. Rajan. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes, I have a question. Yes, I have a question for you. Oh, yes, sir. Are you religious? Many, very nature. Yes, sir. I'm a Muslim. You're a what? I'm a Muslim. Does Muhammad have any relation to that religion? Yes. Yeah. I hear you quote him. I don't know. I quote the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad. Yes, he's he the uh, one who went up to heaven from the rock of the dome. I don't believe anybody goes up anywhere to me. If you write about it, it's you. I've been to the Dome of the Rock in uh, Jerusalem, but I don't believe me and leave rocks and go up in the I don't believe it either. I want to show you that every religion has this. And you're quoting, I, I just, you're criticizing. Do you have a question, you're sir? You're criticizing the, the, the Jewish religion because of the myths. No, sir, I didn't just criticize your religion. I said Islam, too, stole and borrowed from Africa. So there are myths in Islam under Muhammad of 1400 years ago, myths in Christianity, and myths in Judaism, and they all stem from actual things that we did in Africa. So I didn't leave out the Muslims, I included them. I, I, I was under the impression that they thought only the Jews were wrong. Oh, no, no, absolutely not. I made that one even in Old man tried it, didn't he? He tried it. He tried it. He thought he had him an uh, angle. He's like, I got him with this one. Yeah, he thought his religion was about it. His belief. Oh, no, you put that in there? Oh, okay, never mind. Let me go sit my stupid ass down. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And your questions, would you make it really brief and get to the point, please? Yeah, I have one question. Yes, sir. I'd like to know what the professor did for the media meeting. Yes, sir. May I go ahead? Sure. Yes, his question is, what did I do for Idi Amin? I was a guest of his... Excellency President Idi Amin Dada for on two occasions and as guest of President Idi Amin I did fact-finding and research throughout Uganda. I found out that the Jews had set up a stronghold in Uganda and were sucking the blood of black indigenous people of the Ugandan area just like you do in the ghettos and reservations on the businesses that you own. I saw the mansions that you own bigger than this building. I saw the places where you lived and manipulated Ugandan people until President Amin became the leader of that government. He took all of the businesses that Jews had in Uganda and turned them over to black people who lived in Uganda. Now, if I came into your so-called homeland, Israel, and brought a bunch of black people with me and took over all of the businesses in your country and misused and abused your people, you would be within your right to run me out of that country. So President Amin ran uh, all Jews out of the country and Asians and said if you were not a citizen of Uganda, you couldn't own any property anywhere in Uganda. I don't know how many he killed, but I'm sure he had to kill somebody. How many has the white man of America killed? I'm not a Jew, and I'm not qualified to speak on anything connected to Jews. But I'm not, I'm not a Muslim. Some of the blacks in here know me. Others may not care. Sir, can you say something to, to refer that Dr. Martin Luther King was nothing more than a puppet of the Jews or their controller? And I have read of him for years. Yes, sir. A friend of mine, the Reverend Thomas Butler, plays Selma, if any of you have seen it, about Martin Luther King and his life, his cause. I can't sit back and listen to that. I just complacently listen to what your question. Well, my question is, what, what is the purpose? To incite? them a sense of pride so that they can go out and fight this great cause for No, sir. The purpose is to tell the truth. That's the site plain and simple truth. They get real little. <laughs> real little.
to Martin Luther King, I did not say, well, his only value was that he was just a puppet for the Jews. I said that I admired him, loved him, and respect him. I sat at my table yesterday, and Allah is my witness, just listening to him and hearing the fight in the man. I sat there and literally booed at my table, just cried, because he's my brother. And he believed in this wicked, decadent society that hates the black man and woman to their core. And they killed Dr. King. He never spoke an evil word against the white man of America. They drug him and his followers in the streets with cattle prods. They turned water hoses of loose on them. They murdered them in the streets. Many Jews supported him, but the Jews wanted those barriers broken down so they could get in the system. So they needed Catholics. Sunday Catholics. Suddenly the Catholics were there and the Protestants were there because you too wanted a certain greater stake in this society and we were your cannon, cannon fodder on the streets. That's plain and simple. Dr. King stands for himself. His record and his legend stands for itself. And we love him and we honor him, but we must open up the book and look at his testament. Give him credit where credit is due and allow no one to take anything from him. But we must tell the truth on him where the truth must be told. He was indeed sincere, but he was being used just as Stevie is being used today. And that's why Dr. King was so good-hearted and sincere, he was being used. I stand before you as a human being, giving all labels of God, Jew, Black, Christian, uh, born again, redeemed, I leave labels of God. I stand before you as a human being. I direct my question to uh, the uh, honorable doctor, to Rabbi, and to Professor God. How do you serve this meeting the cause of peace when the world is trying for peace? There is an old Indian adage, you cannot judge a man until you've walked in his boxes for one mile. Are we all willing to... Peace is definitely hard to accept, but it's, 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 it's one of those things to where only, in my opinion, in my opinion, only a, 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 a coward is going to run from the truth. To me, a coward runs from the truth. The truth, not an opinion. You can you can sidestep opinions all day. But when it comes to the truth, I would rather uh, uh, you tell me the truth, no matter how much it hurts. But like Yosef said, uh, audio, people are, and I'm not even saying just one individual, people are ignorant. And you know what they say about ignorance, you know? It's very comfortable. You dig what I'm saying? And once again, ignorance just means don't know no better. But people have operated their whole realities around lies in the first place. You dig what I'm saying? So to them, those lies that have built the foundation of their reality, that is the truth. So when you come across and you speak differently than what the reality that has been built on lies tells them, now you sound wild. You sound crazy. Now you just sound, now you just disrespectful. You dig what I'm saying? I absolutely agree with both of the uh, both of you gentlemen, uh, uh, Audio and Yosha. But just being realistic in the the situation and how it go, a lot of people, their reality is built on lies from children because the zombies they call mom and dad, their rea their reality is built on a foundation of lies. So when they had his child, that reality becomes that child's reality times ten, tailor made. For that child, which becomes us, walking zombie, zombie motherfuckers. You dig what I'm saying? But I, but I, absolutely, I absolutely agree, God. People after centuries of slavery therefore understand and appreciate their Caucasian brothers without God's love, the same God we're all referring to, be put in their hearts for them. How can nominal Christians understand the impact of persecution upon our Jewish people and love them, except God's love be shed in their hearts? How can Jewish people forgive their oppressors or even trust the non-Jewish community after Auschwitz without the supernatural love of God in their hearts? The Bible says God is love. 
for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And there's one more word. Your roots were in Christianity. I detect that from the saying your mother read from the song. And this word is from a very Jewish book. It's a brief Hadashah written by all Jews. Shaul of Tarsus gave this word. He said, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called, which some professing have heard concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. Amen. Do you want to direct the question to any of the panelists? I just want to make why is it that when our brothers or man here states a fact and we get aroused or, or we are very enthused about it, why does the white man get up and say that it shouldn't go about because of the mere fact that no one got aroused when this man spoke. And everyone got aroused when this man spoke. And everybody wants to get up and walk out. I want to ask you this. Why? I want to tell you something. The word is this. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. That's the ugliest, dirtiest concept alive in this world. I can't stand racism. I reject racism. I reject racism when it comes out of the mouth of a white man or when it comes out of the mouth of a black man. To say that anybody is anything because he's white or brown or black is stupid, ugly, and sinful. The most disturbing aspect of this discussion is not that we talk about how people choose, but how they're stuck in racism. Bad. I am infuriated today. And I understand, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, you're asking a question, why do people leave? Yeah. I'll tell you why people left today. They, they left because they smelled racism here. They smelled black people who are setting blacks against whites. And I'm hurt by that. I came here in a spirit of cooperation.
I came here in a spirit of love. I came here in a spirit of openness. I wanted to hear, but I was called a so-called Jew. My Jewishness was taken away from me. Dr. Rashidin, please listen to me, because I don't want you to ever do this again. Don't you ever call me a so-called Jew. I'm a real Jew. I know who I am. I'll define... who I am. I understand what I am. I'm a real Jew. I choose to be a Jew. I choose to follow God as I understand it. I choose to reject racism. I choose to promote justice. I choose to work with blacks. I still choose to work with blacks because I want the notion of blacks standing against whites. I insist that blacks and whites are the place where we can live. I smelled here racism. Racism coming out of the mouths of blacks against Jews. I was called a so-called Jew. I was not accepted in my authenticity. I was not accepted as a real person. I was mocked and mimicked. Vivaught this. I don't talk vivaught. I don't talk with a Yiddish accent. God damn it, I talk good English. Oh, you and respect me. That man said, why did black people walk out of here? They walked out of here because they suck. Pardon me? That's that victim role. That's that victim role. Motherfucker said he's a real boy. You got to respect it. He's a real boy. You got to respect it. But he playing that victim role. Notice. Notice these little, the little things, man. Remember, you're darn right I'm upset because I came in the spirit of Martin Luther King. I came because I respect people and care about people and dedicate my life to this world better. And I see people here who have not heard the beauty of Martin Luther King, but see Martin Luther King as some kind of a puppet. You know what he was a puppet of? He's a puppet of God. He's a puppet of his commitments that he chose freely. He's not a so-called Christian. He's a real Christian. And he's not a so-called black man. He's a real black man. And he's not a so-called human. Can y'all hear me? Let me know if you can hear me, family. I see that Yosef said that the uh, stream is freezing. Can y'all hear me? I had a feeling it was acting goofy, but I didn't know what it was. Let me know if you can hear me, family. We got about 15 to 20 minutes left. Let me know something, family. I see Dr. here speaking up if he was involved in it. Man, Dr. Dr. Clark, Dr. Clark with son, man. Calvin Muhammad is like, he's like, he's like Wolverine. <laughs> You dig what I'm saying? And, and doc, Dr. John Henry Clark would be like Professor X, the calm motherfucker. But y'all can hear me. That's all I need to know. I'm going to play the video. I'm going to be looking at the chat. You let me know if you can hear the video. Okay, okay, okay. I see what you said, spiritual. He's a real human. No, I think I heard quite enough. Oh, and I think I've heard a little I don't know. <laughs> to make this point, not, not from me, but from the Bible, who make them of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews, who say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Now, that's Revelation 3 and 9 talks of a people that would be called Jews, but of the synagogue of Satan. Now, the next point is, the Jews talk about Moses. Moses didn't teach integration. Every time Moses went to Pharaoh, what did Moses say? Let my people go. Genesis, the 15th chapter, the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th verses, God makes a covenant with Abraham. And he said that his seed would be in bondage for 400 years in a strange land among a strange people. We have been in this country since 1555, 400 and approximately 26 years we have been in this country. So Dr. King was not an instrument totally of God, but yes, he was an instrument of God because in a laboratory, no experience.
experiment is a failure. When the experiment is completed, if it does nothing but let you know and warn you that that's not the way, then God uses it for that divine purpose. But Moses always taught separation. He didn't try to integrate the, the, the lakes, the rips, rivers, the brooks, and streams and get a drink of water with Pharaoh's people. He didn't try to integrate the toilets with Pharaoh's people. He didn't try to marry Pharaoh's people. Moses said, let my people go into a land of their own. Now, every so-called Jew here, you wanted a homeland of your own. We want a homeland of our own. But we're tired of our people being shot down in cold blood in this country. We're tired of having to march just to get a man's birthday. Nothing about your phony Jewish Deal with it as it is. Moses taught and teaches separation from the slave and his slave master. From the must be separated from the forces of the devil. There's no question about it. proud and boastful. I've been strong in the manner in which I presented it because we're fighting such strong forces that have been a heat against black people for hundreds of years, right. and indeed thousands of years. So that is why I was so strong in delivering and presenting such cold, uh, hard, painful facts. But when you're chosen by God, it is nothing to be proud and pompous of because God chooses you for divine destiny and divine responsibility. And he chooses you, and that puts a great burden on you to begin to clean yourself up, purify yourself, and refine yourself as a divine instrument that will show forth the God's power to the rest of the world. So that is the burden that is on the black man and black woman, who the Bible, just a quick point, has said that he would choose the most despised and rejected people. We are, we are the most despised and rejected by everybody, and we have been made to even hate ourselves. It says he would take those who are last and make them first. Right. And he would take those who are out front and bring them to the end. He would make every valley exalted and bring the mountains down. Mm -hmm. And it says this throughout the scripture. So your question asking me, do I feel superior to uh, other whites in addition to the white Jews? And my answer to you would have to be one in humility. And that is that we are no more than what God has made us and what God is making us, and if indeed that turns out to show us to be his choice, and the ones to, that are to be divinely exalted with a rendezvous with divine destiny, then we have to accept what God has put on us. Thank you. He's such an articulate man. You know, it's not only the knowledge that he has, it's the the capability to to present it in such an articulate manner. You know, you can't do anything but respect it. Right, smooth. Real smooth. You know, I, I, I strive to be on that level. I think we all should strive to be a well articulate when we speak. When we're speaking to people who 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 disagree wholeheartedly with us to keep our composure, things of this nature, I think is important. And you can learn the most from debates in intense situations. Wait, 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 wait. Calm down. 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 Cal
calm down, Louise. Just calm down. Calm down. Just wait a minute. Are you addressing your question to me? Yes. All uh, right. Did I say anything about racism? Well, you represent him, and I want to make. Just wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you making a point to a person who's not here? I'm making a point to you too. All right. Okay. And you're suggesting that possibly I agree with the statement. No, I'm not saying you agree with the statement. I don't know if you do or not, but All I right, make your point. Let me see if I can respond to it. I don't know if I can. Okay. He said that uh, Jews are in, you know, they're there like a book togetherness for us. If they have a togetherness business, why is it all these poor communities see these pawn shops? They don't open up businesses to educate these black people. You answer my question. So if they're together with us. That's what I never could figure out. All right, dear, let me perhaps put the thing on the other side. Uh, I respect the person who followed me on this, uh, on this podium here. We spoke before we even came together, uh, Dr. Rashidin, and I spoke. We kind of understood where we were going to come from. Uh, it was his feeling that since he was a guest to the campus that he ought to speak last to get the rhetoric, you know, from the rest of us, etc. I was not at all prepared for some of the remarks that were heard. I know how some white people, because the question was asked, why do they leave? When, they, when you speak, Harvard, they all seem to be here, they get excited, but the minute this man comes and speaks, all of a sudden they get threatened by it. For those of you who are black, and that's the majority of the audience right now, and let me perhaps take a few moments and I'll get back to your points. You probably are going to find something which is unusual experience. Most white people don't know how to sit with blacks. Most white people don't know how to go to a black church. And most white people certainly don't know what it is to come in contact with a black Muslim type of rhetoric. Consequently, where the black Muslim rhetoric is extremely important and very proud and very this and very that, for most white people it is extremely threatening. So what's involved here is the threat is there, even though it's not realized, and even though these gentlemen are not going to stomp upon anybody, and all of that, but still it's a first experience. On the other hand, most black people have always been exposed, as this is what I'm hearing right now, uh, to a white rhetoric, and they're exposed to white prejudices, and consequently, when a black man comes and talks out of his own culture, it is threatening, and some leave, and some stay, and those who stay become committed. Become committed, as these people here in front of me, and the others standing alongside of me. I don't know how to handle the question about why there are Jewish pawnbrokers in black neighborhoods, and why Jews are landlords, and why Jews are this and Jews are that. I guess the only feeling I have is that I'm saddened by the fact that you assume that all Jews are landlords and all Jews are pawnbrokers, and, and I'm saddened by the fact, if it's implied that is, I'm not quite sure, that Jews are the enemies, quote unquote, they are the white man's white man, and they're ripping off all blacks. Some Jews, most Jews, 90% Jews, but never say, never say all Jews. In the same token, dear, I speak from a Jewish community. Blacks have also exploited me. I was raised, I'm not giving you any yichus here or background to prove my credentials. I've got scars on me that most of my students are not aware of. I survived the streets of the East Bronx where probably 95% of the gang called the Prospect Boys are dead now. I survived because of a principle, maybe it's for my parents, maybe for some else. The black and Puerto Rican members of my gang, if you will, which I was part of and stomped upon because I was a Jew, in a sense are probably dead right now, they're not really survivors. I can't speak for others. I told you this at the very beginning. You're going to get one man's Judaism. You're going to get one man's feelings. I, unlike the good rabbi, I'm not disturbed by anything heard this afternoon. In the same token, I suspect when the good doctor responded with, right on brother, this type of stuff, that he was responding from his own cultural background, and that this Jew up here doesn't compromise and doesn't break. I told you before, and I'll tell everybody here again. And now it's mainly a black audience. You didn't understand. What, honey, I'm not finished yet. Let me just finish my statement. I do not bend. If I disturb some of you, I think that's your problem. Just as if this gentleman here disturbs most people here, it is their problem, not his problem. Now, in regard to the Jew in the black neighborhoods, I'm sorry. For no. <laughs> no, for real, Caribbean. Don't play with him. Don't play with him. Don't play with him. Him and them prospect boys. Woo! Vicious. I done heard the stories. I, I done heard the stories. Them. I don't apologize for them. It is an individual situation. The same token when a guy puts a gun to my head. I'm not quite sure if the gang, you know, when I look at a bandit or a thief or a burglar or somebody who's going to kill me, whether he's singling me out because I'm white and let's assume he's black. You've got black thieves, you've got white thieves, you've got black rapists, you've got white rapists. This gentleman talks about how the whites rip off the blacks, and I suspect that we have another extended hour. He'll talk to you about how blacks rip off blacks. 
And within the old community, you have your worst people. The analogy, if you will, is to the Jew who, in a sense, is the self-hating Jew who can't come to grips with his Jewish skin. You brought that about. Just wait a minute, just wait a minute, just wait a minute. Again, you're using that plurality of the word Jews. Okay, I don't agree with you. Just as I don't say blacks cause my problem, I don't like to hear that Jews cause you a problem. Most Jews, is whatever it is, never use the absolutes, at least in my opinion. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, you know, I'm not a politically correct motherfucker, but uh, shout out to the scientists. Fuck what he talking about for just two seconds. Shout out to the scientists. I'm going to say it one more time. Shout out to the scientists. Dead ass. It take a different breed. Y'all been here for almost two and a half hours rocking with me solid. We a different breed. I promise you we are, especially on these internet streets. So definitely shout out to the scientists. I'm going to be a scientist regardless how this shit go. I love seeing my fellow scientists slash family members in here. Shout out to y'all. I don't care what this motherfucker talking about at the very moment. I just want to say, say shout out to the scientists. You see how many times I keep saying that? Because I'm going to push that narrative. Shout out to the scientists. Let me get back to something else. You scratch my skin, you destroy me, and you probably would find the next destruction to be a black. The same token, you destroy the black person, you probably would find the destruction of the Jew. I find it one of the ironies of all of this, that of all the peoples, that have possibly analogies and parallels in the history, that you find a situation where Jews can be anti-black, and you also find the possibility where blacks can be anti-Semitic. Blacks and Jews better get something very clearly stated, after they get their own trip together, obviously, that they probably would find that in the history of mankind, and the history of... I don't know if I heard that right, because I got background noises going on, but I know he didn't just say that blacks are there are uh the blacks are anti-semitic y'all can correct me if i'm wrong but if anybody out there been paying attention how is that highly prob uh improbable that blacks are anti-semitic what does it mean to be semitic or anti-semitic he's yeah he said it okay you see this is why I say shout out to the scientists because I know y'all caught that with me. I know y'all had to correct this motherfucker in y'all head just like I did. What is the Semitic? What is anti-Semitic? Okay, okay. You see how the ignorance, they got to stand on it. They got to stand on it. That Jew, that ish, that Jew ish, that ish should already let you know. Ain't none but ignorance behind that. I, I was thinking, I was hearing shit while I was listening to my kids. But I hope he, and, and it just was clarified, he said it. If you know, you know. Family, what is this? <laughs> Turn the beast off. What is the Semitic? Somebody in the chat, please put what a be uh, to be anti-Semitic means, to be Semitic. What is Semitic? Somebody put it in the chat so the, the lurkers out there... You know, that ain't typing and shit. Yeah, lost and turned out like a motherfucker. Let them know what that means, please. Because I know I got a, a room full of scientists right now. Bible. That there are two peoples. One, a religious, ethnic, cultural people. Another, if you will, a racial people as well, such as the blacks. That together they're going to survive. And definitely they'll be defeating each other if they work against each other. I can understand where he's coming from because it's important. I just want you to respect where I'm coming from. And maybe, just maybe, when you walk out of this room, not all Jews are, quote unquote, what you might imply them to be. That's all I have to say. I can't speak for the other man. Okay, okay, now I understand what you're getting. All right, some Jews have this ability to speak this way. Other Jews would not. In the same token, I suspect the Jew who speaks this way can probably be asked by another Jew, follow me now, well, these blacks, what is it in there for us? I mean, do they really cooperate with us? Do they really help us when our synagogues get swastikids? When our synagogues have anti-Semitic language on it and stuff like that. 
You have to understand that people are people. And the bottom line of all of this is that you've got limbs and I've got limbs. Your capillaries and your blood is my capillaries and my bloods. Do you understand? All right, all right, just one minute now. Some of you might have a different position. But I suspect if you open me up and I bleed, I'll bleed to death. And I suspect if I open you up, you'll bleed to death as well. And I suspect if I need a transfusion of bloods, I don't know from where some of you might be coming, but if you got my blood type, I would like to have it because I want to survive. The differences between us are extremely important. There also is a basic similarity. We are all human beings. At least that's the way... And the same token doesn't mean I want to be a wasp. The same token it doesn't mean that I'm going to ascribe to three quarters of the definition said about the Jews presented by the last speaker. I'm not so... See the future. He says, anti-Semitic means to be hostile hostile or prejudice against Jewish people, anti-Semitic. So Semitic uh, means to be against Jewish people. We'll say the Jews, right? Now we understand who the Jews are or uh, uh, who carries the original belief and culture of the Jews, right? So to be anti-Semitic would to be, and I use these terms very loosely, don't get it twisted, but to be anti-Semitic would be anti-black very color codes used very loosely okay so think about that family and i've corrected people in their uh their understanding because they use it in the wrong context because they are ignorant so to be anti-semitic but either way it goes joseph the scientist in the room at least should understand when we you, uh, when we hear or see the word Semitic being used, color codes used loosely. Once again, I'm simplifying. I'm simplifying. I'm simplifying. That when we see Semitic in general, we are speaking on black folks, melanated people. Color codes used very loosely, very loosely. So family. Little things that you learn over here, or the big things, because I've been doing this for a long time, and I know a lot of family who done, who done built a whole foundation based off of the shit I put out, right? No problem. Whatever. The things I showcase here are, are, are to correct the ignorance that we all have on certain aspects of things. That's it. And we listen to people speak. We speak with people all the time. And before, you might have not have knew what Semitic meant. So you just ran with the conversation in the context that they put it in. Or when they speak of the Greeks or the Arabs or the Asians, the Arabs, the Asians, the Greeks, the French, the Britain, the Ar Irish, the blah, 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 blah. We do this for correction. We do this to build information. That way we can correct these dumbasses when they speak to us and try to influence us with their dumb assness. You dig what I'm saying? Shout out to the scientists. Understand the different uh understand the 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 actual meaning of the words being used when you hear, oh, you're being anti-Semitic. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Shut up. <laughs> I'm not hyphenated. I'm not gonna be completed in Christianity. I'm Jewish. And in my very experiences, I feel that. What really is the difference between all of us, if you really want to get down to it, and if we had the extra hour, I'll do that, is that we have memories that are different. Same historical facts, but the responses to those historical facts are memories. My memories are a little different than the white Gentile world. They also... That's a whole lie. That's, that's a lie. And it's only the truth when you accept it to be the truth. Color codes used loosely. Black folks can speak up act out against wrong anytime they want. And who give a fuck who feels some type of way? Who gives a fuck who feels some type of way? You know how many arguments, you know how many walkaways, you know how many huff and puffs and stomp offs I went through on this information. Only when I knew better to speak on it, knew enough to show and prove it. Who gives a fuck who feels some type of way? No, we not wrong. People want to make it out like that. I don't give a fuck. 
what none of them little foreigners in that crowd would have thought about what I said. You dig what I'm saying? Khalid Muhammad got the right understanding and he showcases as well. I don't give a fuck about your feelings. This ain't about feelings. This is about facts. That's it. If you want to get mad and say we racist, well, then I guess you a victim now. But this shit ain't going to stop. I'm going to keep dropping it on you. I'm going to stay pushing the line until you motherfuckers submit to truth. No, we not wrong for speaking up. Hell no. You can't be. Little different than some of the positional memories of the black Muslims. And don't you forget this as well. In the Jewish people hoods, Jews are of all colors. There are black Jews. They go back centuries. There are all types of Jews. If Judaism is really the stereotypical so-called, etc., I suspect the Falasha Jew might be among us, if there is any, of which there possibly is one so going to be a melanated being. If a motherfucker call you anti-Semitic, they saying you anti your people, anti yourself. I'm summarizing, of course. You see? Don't let them don't let them play these word games. Don't let them outword you. You know, sharpen your sword, which means sharpen your mind, build your foundation. Sharpen your sword. We are all samurais out this motherfucker. We are all scientists out this motherfucker. But we can be zombies too. If a person, we see this all the time, people with platforms or uh, who are credited with being uh, knowledgeable, they use big, fancy, drawn out explanations and words to say a bunch of nothing. A bunch of nothing. But we'll fall for the shit because it sounds like he know what he's talking about. <laughs> they may have the knowledge, but the wisdom is being able to break it down. To simple understanding. Misusing the words and proverbs is what his folks been doing. He's from the tribe of Ish. Come on now. Back. He probably would feel insulted that his type of identification with white Jews is because he's been ripped off of his culture and his heritage. This is the bottom line. Okay, we have time for three more questions. Uh, Mike, the thing, and the thing. Uh, we have time for two more. The Christian Black Code, Yosef El Bay Bay, is speaking on. I have two videos, about 30 to 45 minute videos, breaking that down. Just by me speaking the name, you should go look into it. It's also a part of my book. Like everything is in my book, but uh, it's also on my channel. The Christian Black Codes. I done spoke on it with y'all maybe two different times on two different occasions live stream. But I also have multiple videos breaking these joints down. I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Yosef El Bay Bay. The Christian Black Codes. What's that first word he said? The Christian Black Codes. Black codes, okay? Dig that. Dig that. Common facts now. You're saying that I hate you and you haven't even asked me. And I love you all. And I am white. And my mammy was black. And everything I know, I'm telling you the truth now. My brothers are black. My family was white. I ate unseasoned chicken. Do you hear me? I am a yellow person. <laughs> and my family is white. I ate unseasoned chicken my whole life. Okay? Fuck. I don't know what it does make me. It doesn't make me any different than any other white person you ever know. But I love you. Mm. And I don't think that it's fair for you to say to me that I don't. <laughs> okay? And I, maybe I'm a little irrational and maybe I'm a little emotional, but I have a right to be with somebody that told a lie in my name. 
in the book of Exodus that the people would be judged all the way to the third and the fourth generation. And certainly that must go beyond. Um, I understand your pain. I understand your pain to the degree of knowing that a new generation of whites is coming that is coming up. You now hate the racism. You hate the slavery, the misuse and abuse and mistreatment of people, black people and other people around the world that your fathers and ancestors before you have perpetrated against the world. But the scripture says that that would be prophecy, that your heart would be in that way so that you would be one of the instruments that God would use to bring this. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. Time out, time out. It just dawned on me, I know, I know, I know. I'm a little late with that. But it just dawned on me that this pale-skinned little Becky just showcased her, her, her ignorance. All that sentimental, stupid-ass shit she just said, right? And for some reason, her game wasn't on point. Morticia, exactly. What the fuck do grits... <laughs> gotta do with automatic black culture how the hell how, how how does that add up but it was a beautiful display of the nature of the beast it was it was it was what did she do she played the victim what do they do they play the victim under the victim role though she had to showcase her quote unquote ignorance, her racial ignorance, and say, you know what, black folks and grits, them motherfuckers, they just go hand in hand. They just go hand in hand now, huh? All right, I'm done. But you feel me? Just, okay. Okay. My nanny was black. My nanny, I was just thinking that, Yosef. I was just thinking that shit. I wonder this, and you know, come on, we know the history of that, right? We know the history of that, right? We know the long history of that right there. You little bitch. Society down. So the book says Satan would begin to cast out Satan. And how then could his kingdom stand? And I understand your pain because here you have come to a table and you didn't do any of those things. You have come to a table that is already set and prepared that your parents or your parents' parents' parents all the way down the line in history set and death is sitting at the head of the table. So whatsoever one saw it, that shall he also reap. Right. The seeds were sown of murder, hatred, colonialization, slavery, and bloodshed yesterday. But the harvest time is today. And you just happen to be born in the time of the harvest. And you must reap the harvest of your fathers because the nature of your people is still in you and no matter how long your hair is and how soft your voice is you still have the potential that they had but your job today and your divine mission will be to rise up against those of your own race who came before you god intends to use your tender heartedness and your anger against your own parents to help bring their world down <laughs> Few minutes go down with the last question. If you have, I'm sorry. No, sir. 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 No,
say that Abraham was his father, the pioneer of the Jewish religion, of the, excuse me, Jewish religion. I want to know it, and he, okay, and when minister came before us, said that, we, that the Jews today are the so-called Jew, and not of the original Jew, and you say that you are not a so-called Jew, how can you prove that you are the original Jew? <laughs> Uh, your question really asks, 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 uh, beckons an academic response. Uh, part of this hour, as far as I'm concerned, is not academic. Part of the hour is emotional, it's feelings, it's the chemistry, the nature that makes up a person. If you want an academic response, people, then we have to play with an academic by game or an academic, you know, type of bylaws, uh, which I'm prepared to do because I know Semitics, I also know the Hebrew Bible, and I know how to deal with etymologies. I don't feel that that is the purpose of the soul hour the way it has developed. When a person is told so-called, so-called, don't you understand what comes across? It's just like the white person leaves from an audience like this. It's just like if I say, woman, you're black, but I use the term Negro and begin to walk around and say she and stuff like that. It's an insult. You become immediately defensive. That's why the good rabbi responded the way he did. I understand where the speaker is coming from. He's trying to make a point. The problem is most of you out there are untrained, if you will, in rhetorics. I can also make points like that. I can also stomp my hands and do. You know why you won't make points like that, though? Because to make points like Khalid uh, Muhammad did would be to totally obliterate the bullshit that you be on. The bullshit that you believe in and the bullshit that you be trying to get through to other motherfuckers. That's why you won't speak on those points that he spoke on. That's why you can't make those points. You may know those points. Don't see, see, you see how he's trying to flip the script. He's trying to he's trying to put Khalid Muhammad in a certain light. But to the scientists, motherfucker, if you try to speak on the points that he made and you try to make those same points, that means you have to uh, obliterate the fuckery you came in the door with. And you got to leave that shit behind, but you can't do that. But do you see how he's trying to flip the script and put the light in a certain light on Khaled and how he presented and what he presented? There you go. Thank you, Caribbean. Appreciate that. Thank you. Dig that. This is a part of the debate. We cannot get mad at a debater for pulling certain tactics. We have to be sharp enough and disciplined enough not to just notice it, but notice why it's important that he tried it. When you know why he's doing what he's doing and making the points he's trying to make, you really understand what's going on. I love the debate platform. I love the debate presentations on all aspects. A little jigger bug, etc. And if I ever did something like that, it is not meant to be insulting, it's meant to make a point. Hence, immediately when a person is threatened this way, so called, immediately he becomes very defensive. <coughs> I am stating what I understand to be my self value. I am not so called, I'm not inferior, I'm not superior, I happen to be a Jew. If my line goes all the way back to Abraham, probably not just like your lines probably don't go all the way back to the original primitives or the original civilization. And I'm not even, I'm not even going to let him finish that statement without cutting his stupid ass off. Do you hear what he's about to say? He's talking to the quote-unquote color codes used loosely. He's talking to black folks about your line probably doesn't go to the beginning. How, how stupid can he be? How stupid can you be? Shout out to the scientists. And stuff of this nature. I don't give a damn about origins. I want to know what your belief system does to make you a better person. If your belief system makes you a better person by the teachings that you're able to follow, so be it. And then he, and then he pulled, and he tried to slip in, I don't care about origins. That's a beautiful deflection. But that also goes to show how important origins are. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. you could dissect his whole speech right now and take note. Oh, no, I dig it, Caribbean. Don't, don't get it twisted. I dig it. 
This is a learning thing, though. You feel me? Little things. Little things you add to your uh, arsenal when it comes to communication, conversation, arguments, debates. Notice the simple little tactics. You see how we followed it up? We go to origins. Well, I don't care about origins. Yes, you do. That's why you said, if I tried to make the points Khaled Muhammad made, you know, you know, it's right in front of you. Ooh, we, ooh, we. But in the same breath, understand me and understand me well. My belief system, my people, my culture makes me the person I am today. I don't walk out of here feeling that I've slaughtered a Goliath or Goliath or David has slaughtered me. I walk out of here that I least have been none of Likewise, none polemical. I don't have to score points by citing as it were the ideal Muslim or the ideal black or the ideal Christian and then chop them down to score my points. That was my whole point before. And if it somehow is negative to most of you and if it's not a popularity contest I'm winning here and I'm not getting brownie points, so be it. I've got to be true to my own skin. Oh. <laughs> I've got to be true to my own skin, and to be true to my own skin is not, is not to knock down another culture and other people. In the same token, I know when another person comes to his own skin, this is how he does it. Fine. People walk out of rhetorics, I'll tell you why, because they're not sure of where the hell they are. I'm not threatened by anybody's anti-Semitism whether it is physical, cultural, or spiritual. You want to know why? Because I have worthwhileness in being who I am. I have worthwhileness in knowing that a tradition called the Jews has made me the better person that I am today. For others, it's another culture. For me, it is this. You can't question it. It is a statement of myself. And that's where it stands. Okay, yeah. May I uh, All I can say is, old boy in the red right there, oh, he about to take off. When is it, sir? He don't hold back shit. Old boy in the red right there. My, my people, since my personal people, yes, back around three generations, yes, come out of what is today's history. Yes, when we go back all the way back in history, I don't give a damn what their color was. Yes, because we all started somewhere from one color, graduated to other colors, and it doesn't make any difference. What does make a difference and why I walked out before is because at this time in life, by your people, my people, Christian people, and all people, we have only one mission, not to bring in hatred, but to find out how the hell we're going to get along together. And we are not going to get along together listening to you or anyone else bring hatred. I don't know who the person is that, that opened up a shop in the black neighborhood. They could have been the most godly person out. They could have been the other kind. Does it make a difference? Do they have to have a label? Why aren't we getting together with the fact to say we are people and let's start working as people? I appreciate your question. And it's a good question or a statement. Perhaps the answer may be a little better. Black people are not racist. We have never... I listened to you all the way out. I gave you respect. We have never been racist. White people are outright wickedly racist. 
Right. Black people have never robbed you of your name. Black people did not put you in slavery. Black people did not take your religion, your culture, your God, your folk ways, your mores, and your norms from you, bring you from a distant land and put you in slavery 400 years in another country. Black people never did that to you. But when you, with your foot on the black man and black woman's neck, find them now crying out, and pointing out how you got your foot on their neck and asking you to get your foot off of their neck, now you call us racist. We are only giving you the history of what you have done and what you are still doing to us. And whether you are directly doing it or not, if America is a country of majority rule, why have you stepped forward to get these white folks put off our neck? You hear what she said, right? It's very important what her last statement was. It's very important what her last statement was. You got to do it. Yeah, he knew he was about to, he knew he was about to light her up. You hear what she said? You got to do it yourself. Not understanding because she ain't her feelings and her ignorance. She don't understand that doing it yourself is exactly what she's witnessing at this moment. Oh, we. Oh, we.
says it's wrong. That's right. I marched with Dr. King, the BSU, I started. Hey, come on. In 1969. Go ahead. Come on. See, when my house was bombed. Hey, 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 hey,
Absolutely. Oh boy, at the end had to speak. <clears throat> he had to get that shit off his chest, you know. But uh, yeah, that was the great debate. Uh, Kala Muhammad versus uh, whoever them niggas was, bro. A Jew and a rabbi. Yeah, there you go. A Jewish motherfucker and a rabbi. Let me let me correct myself. Family knowledge is very important, but knowledge is only not uh. Knowledge of, it, it can only become wisdom if it's applied. You dig what I'm saying? You notice the strategies. You notice the tactics of the foreign man when it comes to debating, comes to arguing. You see what strategies he throws out there, what lures he throws out there, what baits he throws out there. But you also see the discipline, the the understanding, the overstanding, the understanding that Khalid Muhammad keeps, that the master teachers that I present to the family, you see, they show and prove. It's not just strictly a uh, uh, intellectual war. It's not strictly an intellectual game. It's also an emotional game too. Cause I'm going to try to throw, you know, I'm gonna throw dirt on you mid debate, but that's only to draw you in. Hopefully I could draw you in. If not, it's gonna look bad on my end. If you keep your composure and you don't sink to my level, you're going to, it's a 50, 50 chance, but these people, this, this foreign person, these foreign peoples are bred out of chaos. So they have to go for that chance. They have to go for it. You dig what I'm saying? It's important to understand history. It's important to know etymology. It's important to know origins. Cause a lot of the times when we speak, we, 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 we speak on surface level. I, I always bring that term up cause it's about 75% of what I see in the world. And from big speakers and teachers and what you call teachers, it's a lot of surface level uh, <clears throat> appealing to the ignorance of the crowd. I see this a lot. You dig what I'm saying? We say shit like the Arab, the Jew, the American, the Indian, the, 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 but not really able to d distinguish what the fuck we talking about. So family, you know, these debates showcase so many different things. And as a, as, as a man who's a part of a panel where we have to speak, where we might disagree at, or we might disagree with a guest. You know, I just want to showcase how to handle it. So when you see me on these channels or when you see me doing my own thing and I got a guest up, very recently I had a quote unquote debate with somebody who wasn't in their right mind. So I had the advantage and I could have dogged and disrespected and embarrassed and spanked this person on this platform but I chose to handle it the right way. I kind of led the conversation. I didn't get much out of it, but I, I was trying to showcase, hey, I don't just show y'all how to do it, but I also do it in real life. And then even very, uh, what, last night, I was dealing some, with somebody on a panel who, who, who wasn't in their right mind as well. And I was able to, I was, I was able to, to, to direct that conversation so that way they could get what they needed to get out, stay on point, and, and build. You dig what I'm saying? But it's just because I'm trying to showcase the importance of communication and what's the best ways to communicate. We saw at the beginning of this live stream when one of those, uh, is it was either the rabbi or the Jew dude, the Jewish dude, when they were speaking, Dr. Khaled Muhammad was sitting there taking notes. He wasn't making faces. He wasn't chuckling. He wasn't you know, doing anything to throw off the speaker. He just let the speaker speak, take note, and come back strategic. So family, shout out to the scientists. I hope you enjoyed this debate. You dig what I'm saying on the quote unquote chosen people. When you get into that concept, uh, when you get into that concept of Jews, Arabs, Indians, what yeah with my pimping ass you see <laughs> when when we get into these conversations we got to have enough into intelligence enough study enough enough scholarship not youtube not google those are just tools get the books get the sources get the authors all this and really study so that way people can't throw us off of our square when it comes to conversating because you might get into it with somebody who know a little bit about something and they say some shit that sound real good and you might get thrown off. But if you're on your square of study, 
you can decipher the bullshit. Just like the old boy at the end right there who was speaking on uh the Jew the Jews behalf. You dig what I'm saying? So family, I hope you enjoyed the great debate series once again. Absolutely, Morticia. You witnessed the shit. <laughs> I do what I do. But family, I hope you appreciated the uh content. Make sure to hit that like. I hope y'all already did. Uh subscribe, share. Bless the Cash App. Bless the PayPal. Check out the Patreon. Leave a tip on the tip jar. You dig what I'm saying? Check out the Instagram, the Facebook. It's the same shit. I don't change for no platform. It's always informative things that I post or speak on. Also, join the Discord. There is a free library on my Discord. It's free. Everything is free. Nothing. All you have to do is create a profile. Jump on there. Go to the library and just download whatever the hell you want. Nothing but books. Dig what I'm saying? Speaking on communication, we are in the retrograde that affects communication. Just check your traps twice. Might be missing something. Absolutely appreciate that. Peace and blessings to my fellow scientists. I'm in great company with all absolutely family. With that being said, family, I'm sure to see y'all tonight. Grown man talking. Oh shit. Oh shit. Pooh Black just went live. Pooh Black just went live, y'all. Y'all know where I'm headed. Shoot over to Pooh Black. He don't go live unless he got something to say. <laughs> Yikes. I'm headed over there. Shout out to the scientists. I'm out of here.